So we're almost complete. I think there's just two things left to finish off. The first one I'm going to show you is perhaps a bit of a bug. But if we were to type D here now, and then I select the first one, you're going to see Drew Chase on the right hand side. But then if I delete D, there you go. See, so the first row is being selected. But on the details pane, we're still seeing the previous row we selected. So the kind of the highlighted row is wrong. Let's just take a look at why this is happening. So if you remember when we clicked on a row, we'd call select person and we would pass in the index of the row. So when we click the first row, we would pass in the index of zero. And then the ng repeat, we would see if the index of the row is, is the selected index, which is zero, for our example, it would highlight it right like gray. But that doesn't take into account the fact that the list itself changes, who appears in the zero index is going to change depending on our search and our order by as well. But to fix this is pretty simple. Instead of comparing the index to the selected index, we're now going to compare the person we're looping over to the selected person we select in the select person function. So that's quite simple. We just need a unique identifier and we're going to use the person's email address. So instead of index, I'm going to compare person.email to selected person.email. So if the email of the person we're looping through matches the email of the person that we selected, then color it like gray. But to clean everything up as well, I also just want to remove select person from this index from the select person function. And let's go into our main.js code as well. And let's just delete some of this stuff because it's good to keep it's good to keep your code clean and remove code that you're not using anymore. Let's go into our Chrome browser, hit there. So I'm going to hit D, I'm going to select Drew, I'm going to remove D, and you see Drew is still selected despite the fact that they're in row three now. But there's one more thing that I think we can improve with our table, and that's some user feedback if the person types in a name which can't be found. So right now the end user doesn't know if your application is broken or if it really hasn't found any results for the search term ASIM. So let's take a look at our HTML to see how we might solve this problem. So just looking at the ng repeat again, just as a reminder, what's happening is the person's array is being passed through the filter function and we've got our own comparator called sensitive search and then it's getting passed through the order by and that's resulting in an array. That array is what we're looping through. Now we can't really take a look at the person's array. The person's array is always going to be a length of 100, but the result of the person's after it's been pumped through these filters, that's what we want to take a look at. That's what we need to know that the result set is zero. Now how you do that is you can add another bit of code here. So I'm gonna type filtered persons is equal to and wrap all of that in brackets. What this is going to do is it's going to take the result of the person's array through all the filters and it's going to assign that array to the filtered person's variable and then the ng repeat is just going to loop over the filtered person's. But the advantage for us is that we have access to this filtered person's outside of this ng repeat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another row underneath our row there. And I'm going to add an ng show. When filtered persons dot length is equal to zero. So when our search result is is nothing, this row is going to be shown. And I'm going to add a TD and add a call span of four. So one, two, three, four. Good. And then I'm going to add a bootstrap alert box. So let's make an alert info. And I'm going to add a P, I'm going to class it text center. And I'm going to say no results found for search term. And I might as well data bind the search term there as well. So the end user knows or can confirm what they're searching. So that looks good to me. Let me reformat. And now let's go to our Chrome browser again and try this out. So as I type the word ASIM, there we go. So now we have a wonderful little user feedback box, which lets them know that the application is working 
and it just hasn't found the search term ASIM versus the application may be broken.